Liverpool was historically a small and insignificant city which just comprised of seven streets. It only rose to prominence in the 18th century as part of the booming transatlantic trade. However, it was also in this once upon a time, small and insignificant city that a 19th century convert from Christianity to Islam was born. William Henry Quillam, also known as Abdullah Quillam, was mostly known for founding one of England's first mosque, an Islamic centre, right in the heart of Liverpool. Quillam established one of the very first mosques and madrasas in the UK at 8 Brougham Terrace, which still functions and operates as a mosque and a madrasa today. Known as the Abdullah Quillam Mosque, Quillam had this set up to be run as a mosque, a boarding school for boys and a day school for girls. Within the building, there was also an orphanage, a small museum and a science laboratory and was open to Muslims and non-Muslims for educational activities and classes. Visitors that are interested in visiting this mosque can do so as it still functions as a mosque. There are prayer spaces inside, an ablution area and a separate area for women to pray. Visitors to Liverpool should make it a point to visit one of the very first madrasas and mosques in the country. But I came here for an in-depth tour. Join me in this video as I take you around the mosque and show you what it was like to cook in a Victorian kitchen and pray in one of UK's first mosques. We came through here. There is a steps where the grey carpet is yeah. and there'll be three steps right here. Okay, right here, three steps. Okay, and then there is a little platform here which we are standing. Now because of disabled access, we had to make it all flat. Yeah. All right, and then he had his Quran on a cushion with a chair right here underneath here. Okay, and he had an organ, as you can see, he had an organ in that corner. Mm. It means a piano. Yeah. So he was a great writer, uh, a poet, and, and he would, you know, some of the Muslims' hymns, he would use the piano. Oh, this, yeah. this probably was a transition from one to the other. Yeah. And in his time, there were people praying with their shoes on. He didn't okay. say no to it, yeah. but soon after they learnt it. It's not comfortable, and it's not it's it's not what you call um, it's not wise because they'll be walking from cows dung yeah, to yeah, the yeah. masjid. I think they learnt it, but at first some of the writers said they were praying with their shoes on, but he didn't stop them. If they feel comfortable, let them pray. Soon they'll come to their that senses. That is knee, I think. Yeah, yes, it's the knee. Yeah. And then this is the very first Muslim marriage that's taking place here, 1891, okay? Now, here is Abdullah Quillam in the middle. There's a bride from Britain, and there's a prince from India. And there are some people from Africa, and India, and, and other people. Right where you are standing, the wedding ceremony took place. The next picture is, okay, here we are. You can see these steps, which would have been just there, and then the platform here. So where we are standing right now, slightly lower than where we are. So there's Abdullah Kuliam making dua where you are standing, okay, facing Mecca. Mm. And there's two other English people and two people from Africa. So from 1889 up until 1908, everything was going good and great. And then when he left, after a few years or so, the building was sold to the council and all the Muslims who became Muslims, and they were pretty much educated people who became Muslims. Mm. And they disperse into different parts of the country. And after that, we got no trace. We reopened the masjid in June 2014, just the day before 29th Shaban, uh, 1435. So after 106 years of closure, by this great man, Dr. Muhammad Akbar Ali, who founded the refounded the masjid. And sure. alhamdulillah, we spent 1.8 million since then in restoring this building. Still not finished yet. It's a great two star rated building, which means this building can never be pulled down by the authority. It's a heritage, British heritage. It's part of the national British heritage. This is the, one of the original kitchen. He had three kitchens. Remember he had 200 orphan boys and he had 300 girls at the day school and then in the evening for 500 people would come for hot food so it's a big massive commercial operation we had three kitchens just like this and this is exactly what it used to look like that's an original picture that i took this is called an oven and, and a grill that would be situated here and this is a hot water tank 
a cast iron hot water tank that will be situated here so the hot water from here would fuel the waters upstairs um, and then they would have their cooking facilities here as well for the cook everything was fueled by coal and the coal storage is behind that door there's a recess that goes inside the car park a uh, small room and they would store the coal there and where the sister is standing and the young man there would be a partition with a door and that would, their, that would be their fridge, cold room, because they didn't have electricity fridges in those days. And they would be hanging on the ceiling, uh, the, you know, the light, you know, the, the, the poultry, the meat and everything, in a hook like that. So this is the original hook. The kettle, that they would constantly have a hot water, and that would have been placed on top of that thing there, uh, hanging from there. So because the coal is, you know, all the time the, the heating is going on, that will supply them with the hot water. It's still in working form, believe it or not. Now this is going to be a waterfall, that is called a Sunna station and we're going to have fresh plant across there. A huge thanks to Momin Khan for showing us around UK's first ever mosque. With such an interesting story to tell about the mosque and its founders, Momin took us through a journey as we moved with him from room to room. The mosque is still undergoing refurbishments, but despite this, visitors can come and soak up the beauty and history in this very room where Abdullah Quillam, the founder, once stood and prayed.